them with IP Justice, which is a civil liberties organization, an international civil liberties organization that works to promote balanced intellectual property laws and protect freedom of expression on the internet. Um, so I'm here for in a number of roles. I'm also on the advisory group. Uh, for the Internet Governance Forum. I was in May appointed by the Secretary General to be part of this group to help organize this conference. Um, so I'm here in that capacity, and then I'm also here in, in, in the IP justice capacity and the, the advocate for the public interest and, and civil liberties. Uh, so I'm sort of walking, uh, two, sort of straddling two different roles while I'm here. Well, it's a 43-member body made up of civil society and governments and business and some academics. Um, it's very diverse from all parts of the world. And we met uh, first in May, and then we met again in uh, July. And uh, most of our discussions have been about the organization of this particular forum. Um, what are the topics that are particularly relevant that are sort of bubbling up to the surface with respect to internet governance issues that need to be addressed? And um, so we went, you know, we had lots of debates about what are the important issues, what, what, what has been covered before, what is the emerging issues, um, how do they all sort of fit together, who are the right stakeholders, the appropriate people to be discussing those issues. So we've been uh, recommending the, the panelists, all the panelists that you see in the main sessions um, have been suggested by the advisory group members. A number of the advisory group members have also been working to organize uh, some of the workshops, although most of the workshops are organized by the internet community in general. Um, IP Justice is a co-sponsor of three of the workshops here this week, uh, the Access to Knowledge and Free Expression Workshop, which has formed a dynamic coalition uh, to continue the work through Athens, uh, through Rio next year, and, uh, and then India and uh, Alexandria after that. Um, there's also the Open Standards Workshop that we've organized and created a dynamic coalition around, and again, the Internet Bill of Rights Workshop. Again, another dynamic coalition coming up with uh, goals to work towards in a multi-year process on these issues. Uh, so there's a lot going on here this week that uh, I've been involved with. I've also been uh, one of the, the main organizers of the openness session and tried to help facilitate that uh, session yesterday and come up with some of the the broad uh, guidelines and some of the broad descriptions for what that should be with respect to freedom of expression, the free flow of information, and access to knowledge. Well, there are four main themes of the forum. There's the openness session, uh, there's the security and privacy, there's the uh, diversity issue, and there's also the access issue. So these are the four main themes that the advisory groups came up with. You can sort of think of them as baskets, which hold sub-issues that all fit nicely within each of the each of the four main issues. And a number of the a number of the issues actually straddle several of the different um, main issues as well. Well, I think it's both. I think it's about taking action, but it begins with dialogue. And the, uh, the IGF is the forum that's been created to hold that dialogue, particularly with respect to a multi-stakeholder environment. We've got governments here, we've got civil society here, we've got business here, we've got academics here, we've got intergovernmental organizations here. So that's what the IGF is really about, is creating a forum for this discussion. Um, it's not necessarily saying we need to go in this direction or we need to go in that direction but it's sort of creating the place for where these discussions can happen and it's up to the internet community itself to decide what's important and what actions need to be taken and take that action. So it is very much a bottom-up process, uh, the internet governance forum.
Well, they, they mean not just civil society talking amongst itself, not just governments talking amongst themselves, but all of these different groups, business, government, civil society, academics, talking together, having to interface together and work through these problems together. Not just the North talking to itself, not just the South, but again, the whole globe talking together um, without these kinds of barriers of, well, you belong in this group or you belong in, the, in, the, in Europe or the U.S., um, but trying to create a forum where everyone is equal and everyone's views can be heard and uh, expressed and uh, we can have dialogue and debate and controversy and um, the creation of the dynamic coalitions is really the main outcome of this. So we just had a, a press conference in here to announce the co to announce a dynamic coalition on freedom of expression and access to knowledge, um, which is some, is the main deliverable of this forum. Um, groups getting together and saying, "Yeah, we're like-minded on certain issues. We feel that these are important to work on. So we're going to identify a few key objectives and work towards those." for the next year and the year after um, in this multi-stakeholder forum. Well, I think the next step now is sort of to, to take a step back and, and, and reflect on what happened here in Athens, uh, what worked, what didn't work, um, what can we do better next time. Um, with respect to the next Internet Governance Forum meeting in Rio de Janeiro, um, and all, that's sort of the big picture for the whole Internet Governance Forum. And then there's the discrete dynamic coalitions. And, you know, each one is going to have its own agenda, going to have its own, uh, its own way of facilitating its objectives. Some will probably only meet on the Internet through virtual, uh, virtual discussions. Others will have lots and lots of face meetings. So the dynamic coalitions that, that I've signed up with um, are part of the latter. They want to have a lot of face-to-face -face meetings because that's where a lot of real work gets done. So between now and, and, and Rio, we expect to work on virtual email lists, create documents for websites, research materials, and then also follow, follow up with these face-to-face -face meetings between now and Rio. And then in Rio, come back with a workshop on what have we done, what have we created, and what can we recommend to uh, the, the 2007 Internet Governance Forum. Well, I think because we recognize that an, an Internet Governance Forum that takes place in one country or only amongst one discrete set of actors is virtually meaningless. The internet is doesn't really know borders the way the physical world does. That you know you can't address spam laws in one country, and and, and think that that's going to have a, a real influence. That we have to work together in, in international forum because these the internet is international by its very definition. And so in order for us to um, uh, be serious about addressing the challenges and uh, working to promote the benefits, we have to work together at an international level. And so that's why it's so important that we have this international forum to do that. That, that the internet will provide a tool for um, universal access to education and uh, freedom of expression, that the, the countries right now who don't enjoy a very high level of freedom of expression, I expect the internet's going to change that. I think that you, you can't, these, these repressive governments cannot hold back the, the tide of the internet and the opportunity that the internet provides for people to share ideas and share information and to educate themselves and to learn from one another and to be creative. Um, you look at how technology, websites like YouTube, have enabled consumers who used to just watch television to now create video and share it with the whole whole world and that's what I think is so exciting about the internet is 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 all of the promises and all of the the benefits that it's going to bring to people that's not to say that there are challenges and there aren't obstacles but this is a very exciting time in humanity to watch this incredible change um, where basically all of the all of the human minds that can sort of connect together through the internet if you've got an internet connection if you've got a website if you've got email you can you can talk to just about anyone in the world and and this is really revolutionary
Well, that's a good that's a good question because my greatest fear is that the internet could be used as a tool of repression and uh, censorship, that if we don't get it right, if we don't build the internet with the right technical standards that are open, that are free, but instead in, instill in the internet uh, the technology of the internet, um, uh, technologies that are used to, to spy on people, technologies that are used to uh, regulate what kinds of information people are allowed to access. Um, that's my greatest fear, um, because it's, it's this very interesting uh, flip side where on the one hand it could be this incredible tool and and I do expect that it will but at the same time we have to guard against the other possibility that it could also be this tool of repression well I don't think that the the border world really has a choice in the matter. <laughs> it's just a question of, of you know, how, how soon do a lot of the legislators uh, recognize that we have to deal with the internet, we have to work together, that these are not problems that can be isolated and, and uh, solved at a national level or individually, but that it is something that we have to all work together on. Freedom. Great. <laughs>